Ben Shapiro was trending all day yesterday on social media. And as we know from years of experience at this point, nobody ever trends for a good reason. You're not going to trend because everybody is listing their top three favorite things about you. You'll never click on someone's name on the trending list and find that the majority of tweets about that person all agree that the person is wonderful and intelligent. Um, it would be nice to live in a world with that kind of internet, but that's not the internet we have. And so Ben was trending because lots of people, including a huge number of people on the right, were very mad at him based on a clip that Media Matters posted to Twitter. And the clip now has 11 million views, with the majority of those 11 million people agreeing that Ben is a very mean and terrible person. In the clip, Ben is uh, talking about the retirement age in the United States and expressing his point of view that providing a taxpayer-funded retirement to everybody starting at the age of 65 is not sustainable. Uh, here's part of that clip. Watch. And let's be real about this. It's insane that we haven't raised the retirement age in the United States. It's totally crazy. Joe Biden... If that were the case, Joe Biden should not be running for president. Hey, Joe Biden is 81 years old. The retirement age in the United States at which you start to receive Social Security and you are eligible for Medicare is 65. Joe Biden has technically been eligible for Social Security and Medicare for 16 years, and he wants to continue in office until he is 86, which is 19 years past when he would be eligible for retirement. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Everybody that I know who is who is elderly, who has retired, is dead within five years. And if you talk to people who are elderly and they lose their purpose in life by losing their job and they stop working, things go to hell in a handbasket real quick. But put all of that aside, just on a fiscal level and on a logical level. When Franklin Delano Roosevelt established 65 as the retirement age, the average life expectancy in the United States was 63 years old. Today, the average life expectancy in the United States is close to 80. It's totally insane that you believe that you should be able to work from the time that you are essentially 20 to the time that you are 65, which is a 45-year period, pay in, and then you will receive Social Security benefits sufficient to support you and your family, you and your wife or whatever, for like another 20 years. That's crazy talk. That is not fiscally sustainable. Okay, now Ben uh, responded to this posted clip with a follow tweet saying, quote, yes, if you're mentally and physically healthy, taxpayers should not pay you to retire at 65. When Social Security was created, life expectancy was 64. Today, it's 78. Also, people require purpose. If you can retire and find purpose, go for it. For many, that's a bad idea. So his primary point is about the sustainability and fairness or lack, there, or lack of fairness of the Social Security system. His argument that most people shouldn't retire at 65 because it removes purpose from their lives is an aside, which is why he says, leave that aside. Not really relevant to the main point. As far as that goes, as far as that aside goes, of course, the reality, and I don't think Ben disputes this, is that some people need to retire at 65 or even before that because of health reasons. Um, other people want to retire around that age so they can invest themselves in something else that gives them greater purpose. Uh, uh, you know, plenty. There's plenty of people who who work a job and they hate it and they work it for decades to provide for their family, um, even though they don't find a lot of purpose in it. Which, by the way, is very very noble. It's a noble thing to to work a job and work it reliably and provide for your family, even though you don't enjoy it. That's that's the position that you know a great many people are in, if not most. Um, and people like that, when when they can retire, they want to retire as soon as they can. Totally understandable. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, if, if you're in that boat and you want to retire and, and, uh, and you, you can find something else to do with your life that will bring you greater joy, again, fantastic. Now, some people, on the other hand, retire and have nothing else to do, and, and they fall into despair and kind of a listlessness, and they're dead a short time later. So the point is that unless you're very sick, it's not a good idea for anyone of any age to have nothing to do and no real objective or purpose to get them through each day. That doesn't mean always mean that you have to have a job. I mean, there are stay-at-home moms who never have jobs outside the house, although they have plenty of work to do, and yet have plenty of purpose and meaning in their lives. And Ben obviously doesn't disagree with that. So, you know, it's a mixed bag as far as retirement goes. But the basic point that, that, that people need to have purpose in their lives, a reason to get out of bed in the morning, is undoubtedly true. It's also undoubtedly true that having a job can very often be a part of that, though not always. It doesn't have to be. It isn't necessarily in all cases. Now, let's leave that aside, as Ben says himself in the clip. That's not really the point. The point is tax-funded retirement. Okay, if we're not talking about tax-funded, then it's just like, do whatever you want. You know, if you're able to afford to retire, if you want to retire, if you can, 
If you can retire at 35 and you want to and you, there's something else you want to do with your life, I mean, go for it. We're talking about tax-funded retirement, the Social Security system. That is the real topic here. And most of the debate, which, which has not been a debate so much as a chorus of people screeching hysterically, has been centered around the question of Social Security. As I said, a huge number of people attacking Ben and valiantly defending the Social Security system have been conservatives, including prominent ones. So, so let's deal with that. But before we get into this Social Security question, I, I must also say again that, that if you are attacking a fellow conservative based on a Media Matters clip, you are a traitor to your people and you should be ashamed. I mean, th this should be one basic rule of engagement that we all recognize on the right. You never go after one of your own publicly using a Media Matters clip as fodder. You especially should never take their framing of the clip as gospel and assume that whatever is in the clip is all that person had to say on the subject. Like, you should know how Media Matters functions by, by now. You should know how they work. And if you're a conservative joining forces with Media Matters to attack somebody on the right, you are automatically wrong. Automatically. It doesn't matter what the subject is. You are wrong. You're wrong by default. But in this case, you're also wrong on the substance because Social Security is, without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, an unsustainable, unfair, morally atrocious, and economically insane system that is only defended by both parties because it is politically unpopular to be honest about it. But I'm not a politician running for office, so, so I can be honest about it. The system is a farce, and it should be abolished, obviously. That doesn't mean we should abolish it overnight. It doesn't mean we should leave elderly people high and dry with no safety net. All it means is that the current system is a disaster on every level, and we should be looking for a way out. The conversation should be, how do we get out of this boondoggle without harming people? But we can't have that conversation because most politicians on both sides have declared that this awful, insane, unsustainable, self-destructing system must be kept entirely intact and untouched and allowed to continue exactly as it is until it all falls apart anyway. Does your debt keep you tossing and turning at night? It's like you uh, can't get away from it. The unfortunate reality is that our banking system is designed to trap you in debt. These insanely high interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. Thankfully, there is a new way out of the debt trap with Pivotal Debt Solutions. Pivotal Debt Solutions isn't like the old school debt relief companies that string your debt out for years. They have new aggressive strategies to end your debt faster and easier than you thought possible. Pivotal Debt Solutions can cut or even eliminate interest. They will help you find programs to write off your balances so you owe less. They can stop those threatening phone calls. The bottom line is that Pivotal Debt Solutions We'll find every solution possible to end your debt permanently. Before you do anything, contact Pivotal Debt Solutions at zapmydebt.com. Talk to them for free and find out how fast they can help you get out of debt. That's zapmydebt.com. Keeping windshields clean is always a pain, especially with all the rain we've uh, had here in Nashville. That's why I'm so grateful to have Windshield Wow. Windshield Wow is an innovative windshield cleaning device that uses two magnetic cleaning paddles, one on the outside, one on the inside of your car, to clean both sides of your windshield, all from the outside. Being able to clean both the front and the inside window at the same time is a game changer. I wish I had one of these years ago. Windshield Wow applies firm cleaning pressure. It's super thin to get into those tight dashboard areas. Seriously, all you gotta do is push around the outside paddle and the inside follows automatically, leaving your windshield squeaky clean. Washing your car windshield enhances visibility and driving safety and helps preserve the integrity of your vehicle's glass and paintwork. It's a simple yet essential aspect of car maintenance that shouldn't be overlooked. What are you waiting for? Go to windshieldwow.com, use code Walsh to check out for a special discount. That's windshieldwow.com, code Walsh. Again, that is not a position that anyone has taken because they think it's the right position. It's a position taken out of pure cowardice and cynicism. So let's clarify a few things here. First of all, when you receive Social Security, you are not getting the money that you paid into the system. The money you receive is not your money. That money, your money, is gone. The government has spent it. It is gone. The government is not taking Social Security from you and your paycheck and keeping it in a special box. What was it? The lock box, I think is Al, uh, what Al Gore said. And, you know, keeping it there to give to you when you retire. That's not the way the system works. No, the system is a giant state-run Ponzi scheme where current beneficiaries are paid out of the contributions of people who are currently working. So you are not funding your own retirement with the Social Security that you pay. You are funding the retirement of currently retired people. It is, again, a Ponzi scheme and one that becomes less and less sustainable with each passing year. 
not only because people are living much past, much longer past retirement has been observed, but also because people are having fewer kids, which is the bigger problem here. 50 years ago, there were many more workers available to support each retired person. That number is dropping exponentially by the decade, which creates a system that becomes weaker and more top-heavy and inches closer to inevitable collapse as it continues. And everybody knows that, but nobody wants to do anything about it. Meanwhile, the workers propping up the system are much poorer than the older people they're supporting. In fact, the net worth of people 65 and older is, on average, more than double the net worth of people in their 30s and 40s. This is a system that takes thousands of dollars every year from working class families and gives it to people who are, on average, wealthier than they are. In fact, millions of Social Security recipients are literally millionaires. Millionaires who, again, are not receiving the money that they paid in because that money has already been stolen. That's gone. It's been gone for decades. They are instead receiving money directly out of the paychecks of working class families with young children to feed. And it's not a small amount. We're talking about thousands of dollars every year that working class families who have children to feed, who have college tuitions to pay, who have, who have car payments and mortgages and everything else, that money is stolen from them and given to people, some of whom need it and some don't. And on top of that, everyone understands that Social Security, one way or another, probably won't exist in its current form when the 35-year-old working class person today is eligible for it. The system will collapse and future generations will be left holding the bag. And instead of trying to do something to avoid that catastrophe, the current approach is for everyone to just get everything they can out of this insane system. And then I guess just let your children and grandchildren deal with the consequences when they're dead. You know, like when, 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 when you're dead, let your children and grandchildren deal with it. I want to get mine and screw them. They'll deal with it later. I'm not going to be here. That's the mentality. And it is, to put it mildly, a, a, a selfish way to approach this issue. Social security is a bad investment. And I mean, it's not really an investment at all because again, it is a Ponzi scheme where the money invested today is immediately pilfered. There's no investment at all. But if you want to call it an investment, then you cannot deny that it is a very bad one. It's an investment that yields no return. If you were to take the thousands of dollars a year stolen out of your paycheck for social security and actually invest it, invest it in, in, in any other way really, you would have two, three, four, five times as much, if not more, by the time you hit retirement. If you simply put all that money in a high-yield savings account and you just kept it there, you would be in a much better situation come retirement. Not only that, but if you kept your own money, and this is a point I rarely hear anyone make, if you kept your own money, saved it yourself, invested it, whatever you want to do with it, it's your money. That also means that when you die, if there's any left over, you can pass it down to your children and grandchildren. But with Social Security, if you pay in for 40 years and then you receive checks for two years and then you die, all the rest of what you're owed is kept by the government. It doesn't go to your children. You know, it does not become generational wealth. See, this is the theme with this system, if you haven't noticed. Rather than pass down wealth to our children, which is what we should be doing, it requires our children to pass their wealth to us it is exactly backwards. And the only people who really benefit, I mean, the people who really profit from this are the corrupt politicians who keep the system going. And they don't keep it going because they're concerned about grandma. Okay? That's not why they do it. They do it because of the power and control it gives them over all of our lives. Now, we should and do still have programs to help elderly people who are in need and impoverished. And there are plenty in that category. Now, again, every time we talk about Social Security, all we ever do is we talk about the poor elderly people who need it, which we should talk about that. But we totally ignore the fact that there's a whole category of older people who are rich and don't even need it. And yet we're taking money from, uh, from people who have like a fraction of their wealth. It's crazy. But as far as the elderly people who are actually poor or, or in need, nobody thinks that grandma should be kicked out on the street to die. But if you think that this state-run Ponzi scheme is the only way to ensure that grandma is okay, then you have been brainwashed by those corrupt politicians. They have used fear tactics to get you to agree to a system that is hurting you. A tale as old as time. The truth is that ending the Social Security scam would be an enormous win for the American people, and especially for the middle class. 
each paycheck would increase substantially. I mean, you, you could save or spend your money as you choose instead of having it stolen and squandered by the reptilian scumbags in D.C. It would be, I, I cannot think of a single thing that could be done that would transform people's lives at that scale that quickly. And yeah, you know, while we're at it, we can abolish all foreign aid. We can take a chainsaw to the federal bureaucracy. I'm all in favor of that. I advocate for it all the time. And all of this would result in a drastic increase in prosperity for working people everywhere, immediately, overnight. And that's exactly why none of it will ever happen. And it's also why few politicians will even pretend that they want it to happen. And that is why, even if it's not really canceled, and never will be, as far as this show is go, this show is concerned, Social Security is today canceled. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.